Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And Kate from Tested. And welcome back to Model Behavior, where we have a continuation today of a project that hopefully you watched last time. Yes. Uh, if you haven't, go back and watch it, because previously, Kate and I worked on building and painting up this mech. Uh, we love this little guy. It's so gorgeous. Uh, it is. A, a, it was a crowdfunded project launched by our friend at Machination Studio, and we applied a hairspray chipping technique, weathering technique to him. Uh, and at the end of it, we thought, well, he looks great by himself, and a lot of the models that we build look great by themselves, but it's also fun to put them in scenarios. Yeah, I think that a lot of people who build models or collect figurines end up with the problem of, okay, they're all just sitting on a shelf. But mm -hmm. it's nice to find a way to create a little environment to help show them off. Yes, an environment more than just an acrylic cage. Yes. Right, a case. Uh, so one of the things we want to do is use today's episode to experiment with water, uh, water effects. Um, specifically, how you can use acrylic to make some wave effects right. for, for all, they're all different scales. Uh, we did a little experimenting. We used some urethane resin. We are gonna try a little bit of silicone addition here and see what we can make a splash with. So like last time, we did a little bit of preparation beforehand of the boring stuff, mm -hmm. uh, which is the pouring of the resin. So Kate, what do you have prepared over there? Well, this was our test piece. I took a piece of blue acrylic and I built up walls out of foam core. I poured some resin in about an inch deep and when I broke the walls off, I sanded them down smooth. And uh, here we are. We're going to, we, we mounted this little ship here, creating some wave effects. What do you think? I, I think it looks great. Um, this, uh, for the record, is a smooth, uh, smooth on. It's yes. a Crystal Clear 202. Uh, it's something we've used in the past before uh, when I worked on those underwater dioramas. So yes. something with a, a work time about nine minutes or so. It's yeah. pretty fast. It gets really warm. Right, which, as you can tell, there are bubbles here. Uh, normally, if you don't want the bubbles, you have to put it in something like a vacuum chamber, mm -hmm. and get all those out. But since we were going to be making water effects with waves, we kind of thought, why not just leave them in? Yeah, we're not going exactly for a cross section or a big deep diorama here. Right. What we want is the surface effect. And before we started, we'd considered, well, we want something clear, but we also want the, the color of water. Yeah. So we need to tint it. Uh, and you came up with this ingenious solution of not needing to tint it, but using an acrylic base that already has a color. Exactly. I, I considered just painting a piece of wood or something, but I came across a piece of blue acrylic and I thought, well, the resin will already just stick to that. And it really sells it. It comes shining up straight through. Is that like why the ocean is blue anyway? It's just reflecting exactly. off of a, a different sky, <laughs> right? So this is just the bottom of the ocean. It looks great. Uh, and of course, we'll be covering it with a variety of different materials. Right. Uh, this model here is just an off the shelf uh, Mass Effect ship I had at home, a die cast model. Um, and we'll be using this as our first test piece, just mm -hmm. to experiment. Uh, and then for this character here, what we have is a slightly larger but very similar piece of cast resin. Um, and this is uh, on the bottom also reflective. Yeah, this is a mirror finish blue acrylic. So as you can see, it's it's much more luminous. Mm. Uh, you can see just the light bouncing right back out of it, which I think will add some really cool effects. Say you put this on display, you have a little light next yeah. to it, it's going to really glow. Yeah, I, I, I can't wait to see what that looks like. Bouncing light off the bottom of this. Yes. Up, it's gonna get you interesting effects. You'll also notice that we're totally okay with the bubbles here. That's, right. I assume, where those poured yes. right down here uh, because that kind of fits where this character can, can live on top of. And you've tapped some holes here. Yeah, I just drilled a few holes just so his feet would register in. That way we can actually keep this model uh, somewhat temporary. Like we can put it in here to display it, then we can remove it if we want to. Yep, um, and we'll remove it right now for the very first step. Uh, what type of wave effect are we gonna do? What type of materials are we working with today? So we have two different kinds of silicone that we're gonna try working with. First is a very simple, just tub and tile 
clear caulking, silicone caulking. The thing to note about this is that it takes quite a while to cure. Mm. So it is very cheap. It's like $3 at the hardware store. And we'll just push it out, move it around with a spoon, see what kind of general water surface effects we mm. want. Mm. Then we're going to use the Smooth On Silpoxy, which honestly is almost identical in like chemical makeup as the other stuff, but it has a working time of five minutes and a cure time of 12 minutes. Because it's supposed to be used as an adhesive. Exactly, it is one of the only things, it's the thing I use if you need to bind rubber to rubber, that's what it's used for. So this, we will do a few, a few little uh, odds and ends here, like say maybe some water splashes. Mm. What's cool about this, you can just work it out on a flat surface, let it sit, pull it up and you have ready-made splashes. Silicone will only stick to silicone, yes. so you're making water accessories. Exactly. Awesome, awesome. So the first thing is the clear caulking. Uh, do we uh, need to fill up the whole thing or are we working from the inside out? What do you think of the strategy? You here? know, I'm thinking uh, I would work in small groupings. I like to do that. I don't like to cover the whole thing before I know what I'm dealing with. So I would put a bit of a pile here away from the holes and see how far you can spread it. If you notice you like it thicker in some places, then you know you can add a little more mm. here and there. The biggest thing here, make sure not to get any in the holes, otherwise his feet won't go in. Yeah, and what I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna try to work with the, the bubbles here mm -hmm. and assume that's kind of a splash already. So maybe I'll start from here and move out, right? Because I want to create idea. cresting waves yes. uh, that are gonna move away from, away from the character. So let's cut this open okay. and get some of that on this clear resin. So you're really, like you're putting on what I, in my mind, I think like, wow, that's that's a lot. So you're going for a lot of coverage. Well, I realize that I'm going to want to kind of build up around where this guy's nose is. Ah. I want it to feel like he's already starting to make contact. So okay. I'm going to try and towards the ship, go maybe a little thicker. Right. And if I find that it's just too tall and I don't like it, I will spread it out and move it around to the rest. Ah. There's still a lot of coverage to be done. All right, I, I want to embrace that idea because uh, I didn't know if I was making the top of the, the surface of the wave mm -hmm. or basically having it submerged almost in in a, you know, a multi-foot layer right. of it. So I'm gonna think of it more like, well, cake frosting. Is exactly. what it, it looks like right now. Yeah, yeah. And the beauty of it is it will dry clear so all that blue will still show through. Something about this that can be slightly difficult is that when this is done, the color will be completely different. It will be transparent instead of opaque white. So you're kind of trying to anticipate what this will look like. Something to keep in mind is the areas that you build up, you will now be able to see through to the layer underneath. Which actually is kind of neat because that's what water is. You're you're feeling the layers of that, I guess. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, because as I'm smoothing over, mm -hmm. like I, I, it reads to me as smooth, but actually I'm going to be seeing layers. Yeah. Um, and I care more about topography of exactly. this right now. Don't worry about the color. Like, don't worry about does it look like waves? <laughs> does it look like frosting? Does it look like it's it's just going to be clear? Color will come later. Yeah. Keep an eye on the shape. What do you think, Kate? I think it's looking really good, and I think it's one more instance where we could do this forever. Yes, we need that deadline. We the do. ticking time of, of the oven. The bake must continue. <laughs> All right, so we're going to let this caulking sit, uh, actually over a weekend, come back to it, see how it looks when it's all gone transparent, and then move on to our soapboxy. Yes. One day has passed. Well, multiple <laughs> days have passed, actually. And we are here now with our set silicone. Yes, and as you can see, it is no longer white. Oh, you, you as weren't promised. kidding. <laughs> I, I must admit, I had a little bit of disbelief. I mean, on the package, it did say clear, but how clear? It's hard to envision it when you're doing it because that was totally opaque white before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, I think it looks fantastic. We came in this morning, turned on the lights, and I think we were both just really awestruck at 
the transformation Definitely. of that. Uh, now we did a- approach it differently, right? Mm-hmm. You put way more silicone and edge to edge, right. layered it up, and that looks like turbulent waves already. I definitely wanted it to look like there was something, some activity in the water that was really churning it up. And mm-hmm. I, I think I got some of that. A little bit of that spiral yeah. going in. Um, and I was afraid of uh, making it too opaque and not getting that reflective right. base, but that re- that reflective blue still shows. Definitely. Uh, something I've noticed is that there are some cloudy bits. Do you know if that's, you feel like that might go away over time? Or? I believe that that is going to be the way it stays uh, for two reasons. One, those cloudy bits happen where you can see there's a lot of material, mm. so there's just a lot more there. And two, the way that the silicone works a lot of times is that it's an air-cured right. process. So there's no air getting in there. Yeah. If it is uncured under there at all, which I don't believe it is, I think I think that's just sort of how it's going to set. I, I believe that'll be how it stays. But I like it. It's, it's kind of what we it want. It breaks it up. Yeah, yeah. And, and the waves have... The, the foamy parts at the top. Right. And so we do want to add a little bit of color. And so that seems to be the next step. Yes. Uh, I have already been practicing a little bit of our painting technique. What we're going to do here is we're going to take our Silpoxy, which again is pretty much the exact same silicone that we used here, only this cures much faster. Okay. Uh, we are going to take a little bit of it, mix in some oil paint with mm. white, and then we're just going to brush it on top. Like imagine you were dry brushing this with a regular paint, only this will ensure it actually sticks to the existing silicone. That becomes the medium yes. and oil paint. It's not silicone paint. We could have gone with silicone paint. Yes, uh, in my experience though, I've, I've done silicone painting professionally and this is how a lot of people do it. Oil paint is essentially some of the same stuff you're gonna find in say a, like silicone pigment only it's much cheaper. You only need a teeny tiny bit mixed oh, in. It does nice. the job great. And it doesn't get everywhere. It doesn't get everywhere. Because silicone pigment can yes. really just be all over your hands all and clothes. All over everything. You're like, everything. how did it get there? It's only supposed to stick to silicone. Yes. <laughs> okay, so let's mix up a batch so okay. we can show exactly uh, how much of right. our oil paint we want. So this has been my little uh, mixing block. I'm mm-hmm. sure a lot of you have things like this where you end up with a scrap piece of something that just becomes your palette. So I'm going to take, you can see here we already have a dollop of oil yep. paint. I have used this same dollop to do a bunch of previous stuff and it is still quite large. So uh-huh. that is just how little paint you need. So I'm going to put up a big chunk like this. And remember, this stuff has a working time of about three to five minutes, full cure in 12. So we kind of want to be somewhat fast. And it's not an AB mix. Not it's at all. Just, it's, it's just air, air act- cured. Air activated. So I'm gonna take a toothpick and you can see just how little I get on here. I kind of get a little dollop on the end. Wow. And as soon as I mix that in there, you will see the whole thing transform white. It really doesn't take much at all. Yeah. Just make sure you get it all in there so that there's no clear bits left. Not that it would really hurt your piece. Now you can choose whatever opacity you like. I can still see through this a little bit. I'm gonna add just a little bit more. See how that goes. And again, if you put this on, you find you don't like it, you can use an X-Acto to peel it back off. Uh, or you could put another layer of clear on top of it to, you know, make it a little cloudier again. Are we treating this like a paint or are we also treating it like material? Um, It's a little bit of both. So the thing that you want to keep in mind, um, I've been using uh, just an acid brush. I take it and I dab it in here. So again, imagine you're dry brushing it where you want to get it on your brush, but not too much. Stipple it a little. And then you can sort of start to brush it over your material. Now, as you see the way it performs, it might get thicker in some spots. I try to be really light. Mm. Um, And what's cool is that if you kind of stipple into the under layer a little, it it adds just that little bit more frothiness again. So your brush will start to, you know, build up with material after a little while. And you might need to throw this away and get another one. That's why I use acid brushes, which are pretty much disposable. Dime a dozen, yeah. You, you 
probably want to avoid using a really nice paintbrush unless you have something quite poisonous to uh, break down the silicone afterwards. All right, so we're gonna dry brush some silicone. Yeah, make sure to hit of all of your ways. peaks. Treat it like you were dry brushing it. Anywhere where you would think that there would be some white frothy bits on your wave, that's where you want to hit. And also keep in mind uh, how much blue you want to see through. If you do it too heavy, you might lose a lot of your blue shining through. We're taking away the, opa the, the transparency that we have and we're creating you know, opaque little surface bits. Happy little waves. Happy little waves. That's what's neat about this is that just by brushing it on top, you're naturally going to hit those high points. So, I don't know if you can see what my brush is doing right now. It's essentially, imagine I've dipped it in glue and now it's just starting to really bind up. So I can probably get a few more goes out of this brush if you try to keep loosening it and keep some of the bristles apart, but maybe not more than two or three passes on this before this brush would need to take Be a rest. Retired. Yeah. <laughs> Go live on a farm somewhere. It was only one day away from retirement. <laughs> All right, so here I'm going to show you how to make a few of these little splashes mm -hmm. that I've created. It's so simple, it's so easy, I love it. So for the first part, I take my silpoxy and I'm just going to actually draw a little with the tube itself. I'll just rough it out. Imagine you're just trying to get the overall shape of it. Not too much because we don't need these to be very thick pieces. Although if you're hoping for them to be structural where they can hold themselves up, you could go a little thicker. Um, make sure you anticipate all the different shapes you want. Maybe a long vertical one, maybe a wide fan one. And you're not being precious about it at all. No, no, no. Because you don't, you don't care necessarily that they have those sharp peaks because everything can be terrible exactly. or cuttable at the end. Now I go and I take a spoon again, just like what we were using last week, and I start to just push enough of it around to fill in all these shapes that I like. Maybe I you know, want to change one of the peaks that I drew. Um, a lot of times I will push down towards the bottom so that the fattest part is going to be at the bottom. So as I attach these, it'll have a little more meat down there. I'm going to draw this line so it has a more of a solid base. And that's pretty much it. If I want it to be peakier, I can kind of play around with that, pull it out. Again, I could switch to the fork, add a little more texture in there. I like that. You're breaking up. Yeah. The, adding texture, some dimensionality. Yeah. Just to this, essentially it's like a, it's like a sprite, right? It's like a yes. 2D thing with, with the texture. Exactly. And again, remember if you've done a bunch of these, if you've laid out a bunch of these ahead of time, move quickly because you've only got a few minutes before it starts to bind up a little more. Now I'm doing this on a surface I created using packing tape. Why packing tape? It's the thing I like to use a lot when I know I need to peel something off of it in the future. I'll use it as a base for gluing on, and especially for something like silicone, I know this will just peel right up. It won't stick to the paper. Yeah, our craft paper, that would not yeah. be a good base now, for, I for did, the silicone. I did a test piece on the paper. I was able to get it up. There was like a little bit of paper remnants in my silicone, but it's just a lot easier this way. Yeah. Um, one thing I noticed is in the 12 minutes when the surface is fully kicked, when I go to peel this up, some of the underside is still a little liquidy because what did I say about yeah, this? It's not exposed, it's, it's air. air cured. Yeah. So, you know what my technique was for that? Just flip I, it upside down. I peeled it up, I flipped it over and let it sit some more. It really is like baking. You know yeah. what I'm talking about? It's, it's just like, you're baking some cookies. Yep, this is pure chemistry, kind of easy science. Uh, and I think that's all of them, look at that. The others are dry already, yep. I had to yep. check. But um, yeah, it's, it's that easy. Although, you know, there were a few of these I made before we left for the weekend, and when I came in, they were cured both sides uh, without having been flipped. Just the extra time helped yep. it do it itself. Yep. And that's it. All right, cooking show technique. You've already done some samples. Yes. So while this batch 
is setting. Let's take a look at these. Now, yeah. these also have some opacity because you've done the same painting to them. Yes, this was how I was testing out our painting techniques. At first, I tried a little bit just rubbing the surface with the toothpick with the white on there. Uh, then I switched to the acid brush. And you can see all the different shapes and sizes I've created here. Something that's great about it is say I do this, you know, I just eyeball the shape and then I hold it up and go, oh, that's way too big or this is too long and I won't do it. You can just take a pair of scissors and cut it to the shape you want. The only thing to keep an eye on is make sure the edges aren't too flat and right. straight. You want to keep it feeling like an organic shape. That random. Yeah. So applying these, um, how do you go about applying and, and what's your creative and artistic? You know, something that uh, I, I wanted to do, so from my angle here, I was taking, say, something like this, where this is the top. This is what I've painted. It's the most uh, geographically, or what is it, topographical. Mm -hmm. Interesting. <laughs> um, yep. And I instinctively went to put it on like this because it's facing me. And then I realized, oh, wait, that means that the most painted side and the most uh, textured side is actually facing away from the front. So you might have that in mind. Which direction is it going to face? Luckily, they're mostly clear, so uh, it doesn't really matter front versus back. Uh, I would like to try using hot glue mm -hmm. as just putting tiny dabs just to grab the base of it. Now, my plan is we're going to use hot glue just to tack it in place. It probably wouldn't be very structurally sound. If I pulled on it afterward, it might come out, yep. but it would just tack it in place. And then once we have them built up the way we like, we'll add a little more silpoxy and that will again glue it because the only thing that sticks to silicone, silicone. is silicone. And that's like the very purpose of silpoxy. Exactly. And adhesive. So right now I think the best step is let's grab up a bunch of pieces, see what you want, where you want it, maybe trim some into you know the shape you need and then we will uh, start gluing them down. Awesome. Okay, so the hot glue is holding. I like this. What's also nice about the hot glue is that it essentially just disappears. It blends right in, you know? I'm gonna use a slightly fresher bit. As the hot glue starts to cool down with the air, it's less sticky. Yay. Yeah, this allows me to let it sit in place, get exactly what I want, and then I can go through and put in the silpoxy to really grab it. I wonder where where do I where if yours is a mid action scene so where is my action actually happening? Yeah. I have maybe a small piece by the legs. And something to keep in mind is, okay, let's let's think of your story. Yeah. Has he been walking through this water? I think it's in the middle of an action scene. So yeah. one of the things I actually want to do is grab two pieces mm -hmm. and hot glue it here to illustrate a, Ooh, a blast nice. path. nice. I was gonna say, you can also have some disturbed wakes behind him where he's come through before. Right, right. That'd be neat. Something I'm having a little bit of problem with is propping up my waves, because they're flat. And so Kate had the great idea of using some rigid transparency paper just as some support. I can cut out a small piece and bend it in half and then prop it underneath one of the pieces of the waves. right this is I, I had more fun in the last like 15 minutes you know all the paying it off everything really came together and once we were finished with our waves we were allowed to be extra creative yes. in, in the storytelling like yes. 
with yours, the tur extra turbulence, I didn't realize you'd be using so many of these, the, the silpoxy. Yeah. It, 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 without it, it looked like it was turbulent, but with it, it is a crash. It is, right? That's, I was the most excited about it. When we talked about setting the ship up, I was like, I wanna see it coming into the water. I wanna see a lot of action. I want it to be three dimensional. And I got exactly what I was hoping for. And by adding that, the movement is there. Yeah. Right? It is a still freeze frame. Like you could, and, and it gives you more ideas. Okay, now you have the direction that the ship is sliding into this yep. water. Now like all the extra streaking and, and you, it, tells you better than any video like what's going on there. Uh, and we have the same effect with the mech here. Totally. I was having like a little bit of problems adding splashes. Like are these splashes from stepping into like uh, the water? Is that something that just happened? But the moment we decided to add a laser beam. Yeah. And then have the splash come, you know, show up underneath it. Totally. Now it's recoiling. You can see the force pushing that water out. Mm -hmm. Oh, so much, so much fun. Uh, and it's something that, like with every project, we could go on and on oh, and on. Yeah. We could be highlighting more of the waves, we could be doing right. more accents, adding more waves. Uh, the silpoxy that we did at the first at the end of the day yeah. is now basically set. Yep. And so we have a lot more that we could work with, but we're pretty happy. Yeah. yeah. I think the thing that was really clever about yours is that even though it looks so involved in this space, it's actually still fully removable. Mm -hmm. It has not been installed. So yeah. you don't have to have that panic moment of like, well, I'm gonna destroy my part or it's gonna be part of this forever. Like you can still take it out because especially yours has some neat movement that happens. So it's nice that it's, it's something you can add to display it, but it's not its permanent home if you don't want it to be. And this is a technique uh, with adding waves that's really forgiving. Yeah. Like you can, uh, we, we were just going free form with the spoons, with the forks, and adding those waves. And if you're not happy with these splashes, they're so easy. Yeah, and the thing is to keep in mind, so what we did for the base water is that $3 silicone caulking that you get at the store. And you can definitely make your splashes out of that same material. You just have to have a little longer to wait for it to cure. But this is a definitely a very cheap option, mm -hmm. something that can really give life to it without spending a ton of money. Because again, you can do it on any base you want. You can just paint a piece of wood or cardboard, whatever. Yep, yep. I know we have the the full acrylic here, yeah. that cl uh, clear stuff. And yeah, it looks great like this, but it could just be. Yeah. Eighth inch acrylic with some reflective backing. Totally. Well done. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> and thank you all for watching out there. We'll be back next time with another model making project. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.